All right, what's going on everyone? So I was recently going through the Vue 3 documentation and came across a section for something called writable computer properties. Now, since I've not heard a lot about these writable computer properties, I figured I'd make a short video and show you a common use case for how we can actually use these inside of a Vue 3 application. So recently I built this to-do tracking application for my Vue 3 crash course. So if you are new to Vue or looking for a refresher, I'll have a link down below in the description to this video. Now within this application that we built, there is actually a great example where we could utilize these writable computer properties. Now before we get into that, I just briefly want to run you through exactly how this application works so that you have a good understanding of what exactly it is we're going to be doing. So we have a component here called to do item view, and this component is right here. So this is going to display all the information for that specific to do that we have within this application. Now, on this component, we have a few props. We have a to-do prop and an index prop, and those props are being used within the template here. All right, now this component is being created within our to-dos view file, and if we scroll down, we can see that right here inside of the template. So what we're doing is we're using a v4 loop, and we're going to be iterating over this to-do list, which is actually an array, and we're gonna output a to-do item component for each to-do that we have within this application. And this is also where we're setting the value of our props. We have our to-do prop and then our index prop. And then we're also listening for a few events within this component. And then once we hear those events, we're running these various functions that we have within our script here. Now here within the to-do item component, I want to take a look at this input, which has a type of checkbox. And what this input is responsible for is from toggling this to-do from incomplete it to complete it. And on this input, we have a checked attribute that is being binded to the value of our prop of to do and then a property on that prop of is completed. And then we're also listening for an input event. And once we hear that input event, we're going to emit a custom event from this component of toggle complete and we're going to send along the index. So every time we select and unselect this checkbox, this event is going to run. Now, if you're familiar with Vue, you might be wondering, well, why don't we just use the vModel directive instead of defining this checked attribute and listening for an input event? Since under the hood, that is exactly what the vModel directive does. Now, the reason why we're not using a vModel directive here for this input is because if we did this, then what would happen is the value of this prop would be updated directly here inside of this child component. And when it comes to updating the value of a prop, you're never supposed to do this within the child component. You're always supposed to handle the updating of a prop within the parent component in which this data exists, which would be within this to do's view, which is exactly why whenever we hear this event of toggle complete, for example, we're running this function of toggle to do complete, which is then going to update the value of this is completed property for that specific to do. However, for this example here, we can use the vModel directive if we were using what is called a writable computer property. So what we're going to do is convert this example right here with our input with the type of checkbox to use a writable computer property. So what we want to do is inside of our script, we're going to come beneath this define emits and we're going to create a new variable. So we'll call this const and we'll say is completed. And we'll set this equal to a new computer property. And to use the computer property, we're going to want to import this from view as well. Now, normally this computer property is going to accept what is called a getter function. However, you are able to pass it a second function, which is the setter function. So how we do this is we pass it an object and within here we can say get and then we can define a function and we can also define a second function called set, which is going to be our setter. Now within this getter function, what we want to do is return the value that we want to be stored inside of this variable we define of is completed. So what we want to say is return, and then we're going to reference the props that we have. So we'll say props, and then we have our to-do prop, and then we want to get the property, which for this checkbox is going to be is completed. Now what the setter function does is it allows us to define what should happen when this value is going to be updated. So what you're also able to do is pass in a param here for the value that is sent along with this. So what we can do, for example, say value, if we wanted to, to actually get that value. And what we'll do is we can just say console.log and we can say value. But in this case, what we want to do is each time that this value of this completed is going to be updated, we just want to emit our custom event here of toggle complete. 
So let's copy the contents of this emit. And then what we want to do is we want to perform a emit within the setter function. Now in order to emit from within our script within the setter function, we actually want to store our define emits inside of a variable. So we'll say const emit and we'll set this equal to our define emits macro. So what we can say is emit and then within here we can just paste in the contents which is going to be our emit of toggle complete and then we want to pass along the index. However, instead of just saying index inside of our script, we need to say props.index. So now that we have our writable computer property defined, instead of having our checked attribute and listening for this input event, we can remove this here and instead just use the vModel directive. And we can set this equal to our is completed instead. And now within the application, what should happen is each time that we toggle this checkbox, the setter function is going to be ran, and then it's going to invoke this emit of toggle complete, and our application still should work the same exact way. So for example, now if we toggle this back and forth, as you can see, since we're also logging out the value here, which is either true or false since we're using the type of checkbox, but as you can see, whenever we toggle this input, as you can see, the setter function is going to run, therefore it's going to invoke this custom emitted event of toggle complete from this component. Now we're also able to use another writable computer property for our input when we are editing or updating our to-do. So what we can do to show you this is we can just copy this down once more so we can just duplicate that. And then instead of calling this is completed, we can just call this to-do value. And instead of returning the props.todo.isCompleted property, we want to return the to-do property on this to-do prop. Now for the setter function, we are going to be utilizing this value param here as it's going to contain the actual value sent along from the input, which is what we're going to use to update the actual value of the to-do itself. So we'll keep this console.log here just to demonstrate that. And then for the emit, what we want to do is instead of emitting this event of toggle complete, we want to emit a event called update to do. And in addition to sending along the index of the current to do, we also want to send along the current value of the input, which we can get from our param here of value. And now on this input, what we can do is we can remove this input event and then our value attribute, and we can just define the vModel directive. So now if we attempt to update this to do inside of the application, what should happen is the setter function should be invoked. Therefore, it's going to log out the current value of the input and also emit this custom event of update to do. So if we update this input, as you can see, the setter function is going to be invoked. All right, so that is how you create and define writable computer properties within your Vue 3 applications. Now, I do want to mention that how we had things set up prior to our writable computer properties was not wrong. However, I feel this is a much cleaner and better way to handle the updating of our props, and we're also able to use the vModel directive. All right, so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like on it as well and subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.